we sell both KI and KIO3 actually. We yeah. sell both of them. And Chuck manufactures both of them. He's intimately familiar with both products. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess my question is, is um, do you prefer one over the other? And what are the differences? Two questions. Okay, well, they both work. Mm -hmm. They both um, will block the thyroid. And KIO3 um, is used by most of the world. And KI is used mostly here in the United States. The difference is, is that KIO3, since it already has that molecule of oxygen in it, mm -hmm. it's already oxidized, so it doesn't oxidize. Uh, and so it's, it's as stable as it's going to get. So it has a shelf life of years, if not decades. We don't even know what the, the longest shelf life is. And it's where KI has a shorter shelf life. KI is extremely bitter. Where, as you noticed, KI yeah. 3 is not bitter. Yeah. And about 6% of the population will throw KI up. Hmm. And I don't know the demographics on it. I don't know if it's all children or old people. I imagine it's probably children that throw it back up. And those are the ones you're trying to protect mostly because they're the ones with the most sensitive thyroid. And uh, KI is also what we call hygroscopic. It attracts water. Hmm. So it's not as stable, as shelf stable as, as KIO3. KIO3 is, is not hygroscopic. And KI will also cook out. If you, um, most of the other countries use KIO3 in their salt. They still call it iodized salt, but it's, they use KIO3 and not KI in mm -hmm. their salt. And that's because when you cook with it, the iodine doesn't cook out in KIO3. That's because it's heat stable and KI is not heat stable. And there's several other things about KI that Which I just do you don't. Prefer? I mean, it, it, if you if you buy a bottle of this, first of all, I hope you wasted your money. <laughs> and the KI I, or the KIO three? Either one of them. Okay. Yeah. I, I hope you, you wasted your money. It. Exactly. You know, yeah. Good point. Uh, I call me up ten years from now and say, you know, I wasted my money. Good for you. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's supposed to the best is stored in a dry, cool place, like in your fridge. That's best. Mm -hmm. But if you can't store it there, see, you just store it on a shelf someplace. It gets kind of warm. Well, with KI, it cooks the iodine out of it much quicker. And this, it won't cook the iodine out of it. Or your car glove box. I right. mean, that's, this is going to yeah. be better, more stable yeah. for that. I even had an instructor one time stored KI03 in his glove box in Missouri for about two years. He forgot it was there and just left it there. And it gets really hot in Missouri, like 110 mm. in the shade. And it, and the car was outside, and it, it cooked it. It got it hot. Wow. And turned the uh, tablets like a light purple. Hmm. But it still had the same amount of iodine in it. It was just the surface iodine that changed. Didn't, it was still bitter. I ate it. Hmm. You know, I chewed it up just like we just did, just to see if it was toxic hmm. or anything. Hmm. See. KI just has all these shortcomings, and it works. I mean, if, if that's all I had, if that's all I could give to a patient was KI, that's what I'd give them. And if they threw it up, there's more ways to give them KI than in through the mouth. You can go the other direction. Yeah, gotcha.